Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. IRS appeals invites input on enhancing video conference options for taxpayers and tax professionals. Tell you my opinion, video conference. It sounds like it's just an excuse for the IRS to set up monitoring cameras in taxpayers' homes. But maybe I'm just paranoid. Maybe it's a good idea. I don't know. Anyways, first an attempt at a joke. I'm just trying to keep my nose clean these days. And trying to keep your nose clean, you understand? But it's not easy, man. Okay. Oh, boy. When you've also got to keep it to the grindstone. He's really been putting his nose to the grindstone. I mean, that grindstone's dirty. 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 <laughs> How the heck can you keep your nose clean while also keeping it to a grimy grindstone? That's what I want to know. That's... that's impossible! That's nothing! Maybe if I keep my nose to the grimy grindstone long enough, it'll clean the grime off the grindstone, so the grindstone will no longer make my nose dirty, allowing me to keep my nose clean while also keeping it to the no longer grimy grindstone. I've got it! I've got it! However, I'm thinking it's more likely the grimy grindstone will just grind off my nose completely. And then where will I be? And where will Super Dan be then? At that point, I won't be able to keep my nose clean or to the grindstone. And that would be horrible. All expenses paid, full medical, dental, tooth is the works. I would say that there must be some sort of horrible catch. I mean, just look at what happened to Michael Jackson after he lost his nose. Without sex ed, kids can wind up sexually confused. Just look at Michael Jackson. Everything went downhill from there, man. It was all downhill from there. Wow. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Going downhill can be totally fun. If you're like on a skateboard or something. But I'm talking about a hill you don't want to go down here. That's what I'm talking about because there's like bad stuff at the bottom of the hill. Oh, there's just too much bad stuff in here to fit into a single sketch! Possibly some jerk looking to take your skateboard down there or something. Especially not some jerk who never had the guts to try to be anything more than a popsicle hustler. IR 2022-154, August 18th, 2022, Washington. The IRS Independent Office of Appeals invites public input on best practices for conducting video conferences with taxpayers and tax professionals who have cases pending before appeals. Appeals mission is to resolve federal tax disputes without litigation in a way that's fair and impartial to taxpayers and the government. If a case qualifies for an appeal, the office will review the issues with a fresh objective perspective and schedule a conference with the taxpayer or their representative. Appeals offers conferences by telephone, video, or in person and can also resolve taxpayers' disputes through correspondence. Generally, it's the taxpayer's or representative's choice how they meet with appeals. Uh, the type of conference chosen doesn't impact appeals decision. Employees can successfully resolve taxpayer disputes with the IRS using each type of conference. To meet taxpayer needs during the COVID-19 pandemic, appeals expanded cases to video conferences. There's a link to that here. A video conference allows taxpayers to be both seen and heard to visually share documents without uh, going to the appeals office. During the pandemic, appeals received positive feedback from taxpayers and tax professionals about availability and utility of video conferencing. So typically, it, it does add a level of uh, compatibility oftentimes in some cases to actually meet with someone that you're when you're going through the appeals process, possibly uh, going through it by phone is a little bit different. Obviously, communication through the phone uh, is a, a little bit different than uh, communication in person, communication by mail or email uh, is a little bit different. And uh, then our communication by a video conference is not the same as being in person, clearly, but it might be it might give you a more of a personal touch to kind of uh, understand the problems and move forward in some cases, depending on your circumstances, 
So that's an, that may be an option worth uh, taking a look at. So video conferences will remain an option in appeals. With the return of IRS employees to the office this summer, appeals is pleased to resume in-person conferences along with virtual options to accommodate taxpayers' preferred choice of conference. You got the public input uh, sought for permanent video conference guidance in March 2021. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, appeals issues interim guidance. There's a link to that here, requiring employees to conduct video conferences with requested or when requested by taxpayers or their representatives. The guidance describes in detail the employee responsibilities for scheduling and conducting the video conference, produce uh, procedures for verifying authorization authorized participants and necessary technology prerequisites. So clearly, if you're setting up a video conference, you want to make sure you've got the necessary tools in order to do it and be, be able to get at the meeting and get things moving with it as efficiently as possible. You want to use the tool to your advantage uh, as much as you can. So the guidance also includes basic recommendations for establishing a professional meeting environment, such as reducing extraneous background distractions, muting audio when not speaking to avoid interruptions, and ensuring appeals employees' names are displayed for taxpayers. So again, one of the things that when you obviously meet in person, with people as you get kind of that more personal touch which could have you know benefits in some cases and so on as you're as you're going through these processes so if you're trying to get a similar kind of benefit online as opposed to basically talking to someone on the phone you want to make sure that your connection is as clear as possible that you that you can have everything working as as well as it can to maximize your benefits of using that tool so as appeals prepares to update the internal revenue manual with permanent guidance for conducting video conferences and updates to the video conferencing platform technology microsoft teams is what they use so you might have some familiarity with that possibly they welcome input from taxpayers and tax professionals on how video conference technology can best be used in a taxpayer's appeals hearing. Appeals has already heard some common themes from taxpayers and tax professionals. When managed efficiently, video conferences can often provide a better taxpayer experience than a telephone conference. And I think, you know, this is would seem natural to me because again, if you were able to meet someone in person, usually people are able to communicate better and possibly come away if, if they're if they're both looking to to come up to a good result than uh, if you're talking by phone for example because obviously you're, you're missing a huge amount of cues some of which might be able to be picked up from the video conferencing so it, it, it has possibilities so some taxpayers feel they're better able to present their case so again Part, part of the legal process is not just black and white. You're, you're actually dealing with human beings here that are reading uh, the cases. And if you, can, if you can appeal to them and see that you're doing so in good faith, you know, that, that holds weight. So the role of appeals employee leading the conference is critical. So the employee should ensure every participant is introduced and participants turn on their cameras. So obviously to do this kind of process, the, the benefit of, the, of this process over the video, over a telephone conference is the cameras, right? So you, you're able to, to see facial expressions when you're negotiating with people, which again, might be something that you like or dislike or, or not. You wanna use it to whatever advantage you think might be there uh, in, within the law uh, with regards to the processes offered. So video conferences that allow for screen sharing of documents can lead to more comprehensive discussions for issues and potentially earlier resolutions. So obviously if you're explaining something to someone it's and you're able to show the screen and show them the document and say, hey, look, IRS agent, this is what I'm talking about here. Uh, you're usually able you know, to explain more complicated matters e more easily. And hopefully if it's just uh, an issue about interpretation of what's, what, what is happening, then sh screen sharing uh, can be a, use, a very useful tool. So taxpayers for whom video conferencing technology is challenged should not be disadvantaged by their inability to participate in an appeals conference by video. Appeals should endeavor to keep technical requirements for video conferences to a minimum and ensure other channels for conducting on appeals conference such as person or by telephone remain available for these taxpayers. So appeals welcomes comments on all aspects of video conferencing 
seen to help inform IRS policies for conducting video conferences with taxpayers into the future. Public comments can be sent to, and there's an email here so you can check it out, uh, by, the, by Wednesday, November 16, 2022. So overall, and I would think that that process could be a, a useful tool. The thing that some people might worry about, of course, is that the IRS might be leaning towards going to that tool and basically removing the other options that were previously available, which could be could be good or could be bad. You would think that video conferencing would be more efficient from an IRS perspective than physical meetings, for example. And uh, obviously, uh, people that are representative CPAs and lawyers that are doing representative type of work have a different structure involved. Uh, you know, the, the, some will benefit, some will not. If you if you move from a standpoint of people representing in person versus video conferences and and this kind of stuff, so people will have their own interests involved in it. But uh, so you can you can tell those interests to the IRS and tell them what you think. And uh, so there's a web. Uh, email here and there'll be a link to this in the description so you can pick that up if you want to take a look at it.